1, go to turn to James 1, 16, book of James. Verse 16. We're going to go 16 through uh, 18. And it says, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And so the thing, the, the point I'm trying to make is, when we stay focused on Christ, we don't change. It says God has no variableness, and we're a kind of His first fruits of His creatures. So the reward, it says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness. No variableness means He doesn't vary. He's He's on the straight and narrow. You know, a double-minded man is unstable in all His ways, right? It says, uh, neither shadow of turning. You didn't turn to the right or to the left, just like we read those verses. It says, of his own will, begat as he with the word of truth, the ultimate truth, who, uh, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. In other words, what he's saying is, God doesn't change. And if we get that gift, the perfect gift from the Father, then we shouldn't change. Right? The man, the flesh will change, but not the spirit. In other words... Let's stop trying to change stuff up. Let's stop trying to expand our horizons. Let's stop trying to change those things that, that don't make sense to us or, or that we feel people leave the Look, people are going to leave the church no matter what. If they're going to leave the church, they're going to leave it. And I honestly think in a couple of years, these mega churches and all that, there's just going to be an even greater falling away from all that because that gets boring. You know, you ever been to a concert? You know, I've, I've only been to like one or two concerts. I've never liked concerts in the first place. I've been to one or two. After a while, you get really bored. Especially if you have to stand through the whole concert. You're waiting for the one, two songs that you know. And other, all the other songs are like foreign to you. Even if you follow that. I, I think we went to see YouTube one time. And you know, it's not, not anything I'm proud of. You know, this is back in a long time ago. Like 20 years ago. But I remember when we went to see YouTube. Because a bunch of friends of ours wanted to see them. They really liked them. I kind of. They were like, okay, whatever. And so I remember just standing there. I'm just waiting for like the one or two songs that I knew. Your feet hurt, it's really loud, everybody's screaming, and it's all hot and sweaty. You're just kind of waiting around. It gets boring after a while. But see, when you're in the Word of God, nothing is boring because you're always going to get a new word. You're going to get a new teaching. You're going to grow and edify yourself. See, look, we're sinners saved by grace. So if you're sinful by nature and God's going to correct you with His Word, there's always something to correct. We're not, we're not perfect on the earth. So then there's always something new in His Word. His Word isn't new. It's new to us, right? But the world gets bored of this stuff. They're like, oh, well, I tried to read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and then I got to Deuteronomy, and I called it a day. Well, yeah, if you read Deuteronomy the first time, it's tough. You know, the more you read it and you start to see Jesus in there, and you start to see the prophecies, and you start to see, you know, how He ties it all together. Man, it gets real fun to read the Bible. But the first few times, man, that's a rough book to read, you know, but... Well, after time, you start to see the consistency in his, in his creation, in our lives, in people, in human nature, why things happen the way they do, why people come to church, why people leave church, why people love you, why people hate you. All of a sudden, everything starts to make... I don't need to go to a psychology class to understand why people hate me. God said in His Word that they would hate me because they hated Jesus first. Okay, it makes sense. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. But, you know, you go to one of these hippie churches... And people are like, well, it's all love. We should never hate each other. Not only us, but we shouldn't hate anybody else. And then you don't want to end up hating anything. But then somebody like us comes and preaches the word and they hate us, right? They'll close the door on us right away. <laughs> you ever meet those guys? Remember when we go so away? And uh, you, you meet the people who are like, oh, yeah, I go to church. Are you saying, yeah, I don't have time for you. And they close the door on you. Uh, that's the hippie church they're going to. 